Welcome back to another tutorial guys, we've got another image sent in, so again we're trying to achieve those brown and teal tones, so warmth in the shadows and some teals in the highlights and a uh, very little amount of contrast and a nice smooth image, so properly dropping the clarity and things like that. So we've done an image on him before, let's get over to his Instagram, I'll show you his work. So you guys can go give him a follow down in the description, I'm always putting their links down in the description guys. So. If you like their work go down there give them a follow let them know you found them through this tutorial and we are going to be working with this one right here trying to achieve this exact edit with the exact same image so for settings for this image it's been taken at 22 millimeters so nice and wide capturing everything and then an f-stop of f4 so he's trying to get everything in focus so he's chosen a high f-stop at f4 and then a real low shutter speed of uh, 1 over 60 so that allows him to get extra light to increase that f-stop ISO 2000 because as you can see it's quite a dark image we need to boost that up a bit to get a bit of extra light which allows you to get an f-stop at f4 Four. okay so let's carry on let's look at a few more of his images so again those really nice teals and then those desaturated greens with quite a few teals in the image as well and then when you add those teals in the highlights you can see you get some extra teals in the blues that are there naturally so they really pop and yeah we are gonna get into this one right here and if you guys want you go check out his youtube i'll link that down in the description as well and also if you like his style check out his partner as well so if we click here this is her instagram right here and we can check out their blog if we just click right here our travel blog so yeah come over here guys if you want to learn about their equipment tips and tricks destinations follow along check out their content over here but if we go back to their instagram so let's try to achieve some brown and teal tones and uh, this image was also taken on the 5d mark IV. i forgot to mention that before but let's get into this edit his unedited image and then the image off his instagram so as you can see we are working with a jpeg because these numbers aren't going into the thousands but that's fine because it's a high quality jpeg so it will edit just fine so for this edit i use my brown and teal preset as the base for this tutorial so um this preset got me really close there's just a few things you'd have to adjust so brightening it up maybe cooling it down and then maybe working with the split toning so if you real quickly just look down here you can see we're really really brown in the shadows which is what you want for this preset but this tutorial uh, this image isn't that brown down there so you'd maybe take some out of the shadows maybe not quite that much you'd maybe um, come up and just drop the greens a bit or warm them up saturation of oranges maybe darken the image and you start to get something pretty close like you'd want to bring up the yellows and the oranges a bit more Um, yeah I won't do any more but uh, this is the preset I use to get the base and then tweak a whole lot of things from there so if I just reset everything so I'll just start from scratch now and I'll show you guys the complete process about what I think about editing this so as you can see we've got really yellow lights in this image so it's kind of not giving us a true white balance it doesn't really matter because you're just doing your own style but if you look at things like down here here's a white area of the image let's shift the temperature to cooler because we're really really warm in those highlights so identifying things that should be white is a really handy way to affect your white balance so we'll just go a bit further this way we won't go all the way we'll just stop it about there and that gets us a closer starting point so let's carry on let's just up the contrast a bit because um, I know I'm gonna add a little fade to the blacks here and that's gonna really it's gonna slightly broaden things and soften things up so I know to bring up the contrast a bit um, shadows he usually goes for a really bright 
look to his images. Um, let's drop a few of these. Now I'll just do some work in the curves and then I'll explain why I did them. So these curves are they're from the preset so I didn't, don't have to do anything different for, to it but I'll just show you guys the process. Okay, so that's the curves done. We'll just need to bring up the exposure before I talk about the curves. So we've just got a general slight S curve in the, uh, in the curves here, and that's from the preset, so nothing special going on. The, you can see those blues kind of dip down in the shadows a bit lower than the reds. And what that's gonna do is take more blues out of the shadows and therefore making the shadows warmer. So that's something, as you can see, it gets really, really warm in the shadows if I pull those blues out. And then you can see that the reds are only very slightly taken out of the shadows. So you've very slightly got more reds in the shadows. So that's what it helps this to achieve this blue, um, no, this, what did I call it? Brown and teal look by having warm shadows. Warm shadows kind of gives off that brown look. So, uh, and in this curve, you can see if you look at the darkest areas, there's this fade to the blacks there. And I quite often think of this as how much detail can I see in those dark areas? So if we flatten this out, so this is before, and then if we just bring it back you can see there's that flatness in the dark areas now so if I undo that again you can see how we can see detail down there you can see little bits and then when we add that flat flatness it sort of gets rid of a bit of it it's not that obvious in this image but I keep looking at how much detail can I see in those dark areas and if I can't see much then I think okay bring up the black point and it's going to add a real harsh fade so if I bring it exaggerate it heaps, bring it really far up. You can see we lose all that detail down there. It kind of looks a bit unnatural. You'd never have it like this. You'd have it more like, yeah, you lose detail when you add in fades down here. So that's what I was thinking there. And I bring up the blacks here and not up here because this, this is different than down here. This will reveal lots of detail down there as well. So they, sl and it doesn't create a fade, it will just brighten the image. We're bringing it up here, will result in a fade to the image. So remember it's different, lots of people get confused about that, but let's carry on. Let's work with exposure a little more. Let's up the shadows a bit. Um, whites. So he has a very low contrast look to his image, but this one kind of com comes off a lot more contrast. Um, texture, he goes for a very smooth look. We'll bring that down a bit. We'll also bring down clarity. Um, and then vibrance down. So vibrance, taking the vibrance down, your image will just, have a little more of a cinematic look maybe you don't have that pop to the colors because it doesn't because the vibrance affects sort of the more of the mid-tones and brighter colors um right let's just brighten it a bit more right Let's work with some colors now or split toning. You want to do split toning before you work with the colors usually because these will affect all your colors in the entire image. 
So for the brown and teal look, you want, you genuinely want uh, red in the shadows because that will give off a brown a bit, but we've got plenty of warmth in this image. So I'm gonna actually keep a little bit of blue in there. And we have such a dark image, the majority of the image is um, shadows. So it's really warm at the moment. And then for the highlights, some blue as well. Again, because we already have a really warm image, already got those warm tones that once you desaturate a few other colors really gives off a brown. Okay, um, let's just work with some HSL so we can get these colors. So if we really warm up those yellows, we'll have to desaturate them a lot. We'll do that now. And then the greens, um, let's maybe desaturate our greens. And then we want to keep a little bit of greens in there. We can see, um, if we bring it back up, we want to be able to see a little bit of green. At the moment, they're like completely brown. So what I'm going to do is shift the greens towards over here and they go a little more of a blue color and they keep a little bit of those greens, even though, if, even though we have green saturation all the way down to negative 100. We'll go about there, um, and then our oranges, probably need to bring them down. Reds can come down too. Let's brighten our image a bit again. We just got a luminance. I want to deepen these uh, greens. You can see they're popping quite a bit at the moment. Drop, see how that takes away the shine. The brightness of the greens. Let's drop that a bit. Blues. Um, they're about good like that. Back to working in the hues. So these oranges, you can see we are a bit yellow to our oranges. We want them to be a bit more red. So about there. You know, reds, still, still a bit of reds in the skin tones there. So let's move them there. And then make sure so there's no reds up here, but there are oranges. So it's best to look at um, skin tones. No, it's best to look at the orange up here when adjusting the orange rather than the skin tones because the reds also affect that area. Reds also affect skin tone. So when up here, um, I'd use the oranges. Okay, I think that looks good. Um, blues, so we've got quite a teal. Uh, no aquas in this one, but I will move it over in this direction because I know that's how his other images kind of look. And then blue, you can see back there, that this direction is purple. This way is a tealy green. Go slightly this way and that, that will give us those nice teals. It's fine-tuned saturation, so um, let's go about there. Oranges. Um, okay, looking good. Let's drop the blues and aquas. 
there isn't many blues and apples in this image but i know they need to be dropped they need to be dropped roughly in line with all of the other colors Same with purples and magentas because otherwise you'll get an image with those colors and it will just really really stand out okay and i think we're about good there so his images look really natural and soft so just a little bit of sharpening um let's come down to grain let's chuck in a little bit Let's just double check our exposures up here. I think we look good. And yeah, I think we're about done, guys. So actually, there's certain things I want to improve on on this one. So as you can see, we're a lot brighter in the foreground. They've nicely placed these uh, leaves here as foreground. And we want to bring them out. So I've already placed a few of these filters for this tutorial and if i just uncheck that box what we want to do is just bring up the exposure and that just reveals the foreground a bit more makes it stand out a bit more creates depth to the photo okay we'll run with that and then we want some brushes around a few other areas so over here you can see like these bushes are standing out and they're standing standing out a lot so I'm guessing he's gone in with a brush and brightened a few of the main areas. So if I just turn on this, I'll show you where this is affecting. So I just wanted to brighten all these little areas because I think it sort of just makes the image stand out a bit more. So if we just turn that off again, up the exposure. And warmth maybe, because I mean, just to keep it there's nice colors in it go with that um, and then just one for the skin tones I think we are a little too saturated for the skin tones so if I just show you again where that's affecting bring that down a bit and yeah I think we're looking pretty good we could maybe do with a little more saturation to those oranges perhaps to get more saturation up here but then our skin tones get a bit too saturated and we'd have to adjust those but um, I'm pretty happy with that or over here or or maybe these oranges need to be bought a bit more this way because you can see there's like a little bit of redness to the trunk of the tree there and deep in those oranges there's a little bit of redness there so maybe luminance could be brought down or um or leave it there and you have to come in with a brush but i always suspect that he's brushed his skin tone to make the skin tone match the photo a bit better rather than brushing all these other bits and probably the last thing I want to do, you can just see that we are a bit brighter in this image in certain areas. So a really good way to check that is if you come down here. Uh, so this is the image we're working on at the moment. And if I just click over to our reference image so that it appears directly on top of the image we're working on right now. And you can see the difference if I switch back to the image we're working on. You can see there's that's an easy way to see the slight slight differences and what I see is that we're a bit brighter like in the greens and in the highlights over here so what I'm going to do is actually drop the luminance of the yellows so I'm going to drop it down and as you can see we get these richer colors these darker richer rich these yellows get a bit more like an orange so nice and rich and yeah I am happy with that now guys before and after 
and I'll probably just leave it there. Tiny differences I can see maybe, but I'm pretty happy with that. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Okay, so I hope you guys liked that tutorial and you guys can go give them a follow down in the description. I'll put their YouTube, I'll put their blog, both their Instagram. So go down there, let them know you found them through these tutorials. Uh, if you like these tutorials, check out the presets, guys. Uh, heaps of awesome feedback on them. And yeah, if you guys are interested in video editing, so maybe you like my photo editing, but I do do video editing as well, the color grades, the LUTs. So that stuff is over on my website so i want to keep youtube photo based for now but if you go over to my website you'll be able to find LUTs and things like that that i think you guys will also really like and i'm also starting a patreon so if you guys have found lots of value through these videos because i've been getting lots of comments about how these videos have allowed you guys to become full-time photographers in just a matter of of months and yeah if you guys were to become a patreon for as little as five dollars a month all that money would be going straight back into this channel it would allow me to make way more tutorials and stuff like that i'll make a video dedicated to that over on my patreon at some stage but yeah i'll put that down in the description guys if you want to know more about that i'll work on creating some exclusive content for patreons but yeah, for now, that's all guys. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Comment down below who you guys want to see so I can go um, message them on Instagram, ask them to send in a photo and do a tutorial on them. But that's all guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.